Hallo, mein Name ist der Strahel Smirkov und ich werde auf Englisch präsentieren. Um, no innovation, no success. True, but where is the limit to that? A lot of companies today are investing tons of money in their research <coughs> and development departments without even asking themselves if that is what they have to do. I say over-innovation could be as deadly as no innovation at all. But before I tell you why, we have to see what innovation really means. We see innovation as an idea that leads to new products or services or improved products that make the customer happy. Innovate or die. It's a well-known fact that companies that don't innovate lose market shares to their competitors and sooner or later have to declare insolvency. Um, but yet sometimes there could be just too much innovation and you can go overboard. A perfect example with going overboard with too much innovation is for example, can be found in the printing industry. Now printing machine manufacturers have had a lot of innovations in the past few years which made printing machines bigger and faster, which made, of course, the print production faster too. But printing machine manufacturers disregarded the customer's needs, and the customer's needs weren't a faster production at all. So the overcapacities that have built up in the past few years led consequently to the insolvency of one of the biggest printing machine manufacturer, MAN Roland. Now, I know that it is in our nature to restlessly seek to improve things, but stop for a second and ask yourselves this question. Aren't you just frustrated by all these new products today? And can you really, doesn't it take you a lot more time today to find out what you want to buy? For example, when you go to the supermarket, don't you just get lost in this innovation labyrinth? Their studies show that there are over 300,000 new products yearly and that customers don't really want to try out all these new products. It's a simple and well-known fact that once you buy a product and you're satisfied with it, you usually go back to the supermarket and buy this product again. So try to stay innovative all the time. Okay, do so but don't lose track of your core business, like for example, Chibo did. Chibo spent too much time on product diversification and left their coffee business behind. Now, weekly product sales, uh, sales served their purpose and generated the planned revenue, which today accounts for up to two thirds of Chibo's total revenue, but that led to the quality loss of their coffee beans and, of course, to the loss of a big chunk of their customers. Now, innovation is sometimes not even needed. Think about Red Bull. True, their marketing strategies and campaigns have been innovative all along, like, for example, the Baumgartner jump, but their product, the taste and the look of their product hasn't changed at all. Another product, traditional product, that hasn't changed for 100 years now is, for example, Nivea by Beiersdorf. Now, the fact that their product survived up until now without undergoing any innovation at all has branded their corporate image and made them the colossal success they are today. So, how to keep the perfect balance between over-innovating and no innovation at all? Here are our guidelines. First of all, if you want to innovate, then do so in the right time, at the right place, with the right quantity and quality, addressing the right target group. Second of all, if you want to innovate, then keep in mind that more is in most cases less. And last but not least, if you want to innovate, then know that the size of your company does matter. You see, a company like Google can invest a lot of money in innovations and 
a mistake here or there might be bad for the company, but not but will not be as devastating as making this mistake in a smaller company. So that means when you try to innovate, then always consider the size of your company and know the boundaries of your budget. Thank you.